Hey folks, thank y'all for stopping by the wagon. Ooh, we doing something a little different this week. Who doesn't like to sit around a fire and tell a story? I sure do, and you're in luck, you are, because we're gonna share some with you that'll bring you comfort, peace, and hope. Come on, I got the fire stoked. Well, folks, thank y'all for dropping by camp. Now, this is a little something different this week, it is. And hey, even though it's not dealing with food, it is dealing about what we need right now. Hope, faith, resiliency, knowing how to get by no matter what life throws at you. Now, I can remember hearing stories from my dad when I was little about the Dust Bowl, the Great Depression. And they would go to a neighbor's house, walk down the road that had electricity, and what would they do? Tune that old radio in. What'd they listen to? Roosevelt's fireside chats. At that time, folks, he was calming people's fears. He was telling folks about we can make it. He was also telling us we are a great nation. All of them still apply today, folks, they do. Now, I'm not a president, but I'm gonna read you some stories through here that have meant a lot to me and Shan and have helped us get through some really hard times. And folks, they'll apply to everyday life. So all we're asking you to do is just pull up a chair, grab you a cup of coffee, glass of tea, sit back, relax, and let's just hear some stories. Well, this first story, folks, comes from our new book that just come out. And I'll give you a little backstory on this first. Uh, the greatest generation of people that ever lived to me was the people that went through the Dust Bowl. And they were tough. Let's talk about true grit. They had it. But the same thing still applies to us today. And if you'll listen to this story and bear with me, hey, I think we'll all get a little meaning out of it. And it's just called this the dust of our fathers. I was raised and still live in the very southwest corner of Oklahoma, and if you throw a rock to the west, it'll land in Texas. Our community of Hollis is nestled in a flat, grassy prairie of the Great Plains. Wheat and cotton fields dot the landscape as well as cattle ranches, many of which have been in operation for generations. It's harsh country. The wind blows and the dust rolls here. Some calves are born and they won't feel a raindrop on their back for months. Folks just don't have grit in their teeth, but it's in their hearts too. It's not for the weak, and most of the folks who call this their home are descendants of Dust Bowl survivors. Historians claim that the Oklahoma Panhandle was the epicenter of the Dust Bowl, and as the crow flies, Hollis is about 140 miles southeast of the Panhandle. There were reports of dirt traveling as far as New York City from the great dust storms in the 1930s. So really, our little town wasn't a far commute for the chaos to come knocking at folks' doors. My father, he lived through this dust bowl in Hollis, along with parents and four siblings. When I was growing up, he'd tell us kids stories about the great darkness that swept over his home and as far as the eye could see when he was a little boy. Remembering his tales now, I realized that he was not only a part of the greatest generation, but the toughest one as well. I can still hear his words today. I remember the wind blowing pretty hard that first morning, which was the beginning of the dirty 30s. The sun disappeared like a storm was rolling in, but the clouds had a strange color to them. I asked Mama if it was a tornado. She seemed panicked as she called for us to come inside. The murky clouds kept building and tumbling over and over, and I remember when the black wall finally hit, it was like a dark shadow that laid over our house. Its evil breath full of dirt blew heavy against our door. Mama lit a coal oil lantern in the kitchen, and even though it was clearly afternoon, when the sun should have still been shining, the wind beat on the house with an eerie howl, rattling the window panes so hard that I thought they would shatter. Small particles of earth crept into every crack of the house. Mama quickly hung quilts over the windows and doors trying to keep the dust out. The wind went on for hours, and the coal oil lanterns grew dim from all the dust floating around us. What we thought was just a bad storm that would last a few hours didn't leave. It stayed for six more years. At night, Mama would put me and my twin sister to bed. She'd wrap our faces with a wet towel to keep us from breathing the dust while we slept. I'd think, I can't go to sleep because I might not ever get up. In the mornings, the wind would usually be calm, but it left its calling card. Across our white bed sheets were long, thin lines of dirt eight inches apart that had blown through the cracks in the walls. 
every few days, Paul and my older brothers would get up in the attic with a shovel to remove all the dirt from the ceiling to keep it from caving in. Chickens would roost in the middle of the day because of the darkness. Mailboxes were covered by sand drifts. We called it the devil's breath. There was no escaping it. Everyone was affected. The rich, the poor, the livestock. We'd go over to the neighbors to help them remove some of their cows that have died from suffocation. Later, even more perished from starvation. Even though that dark era is decades behind us, its presence still lingers in the areas where the heavy dirt settled throughout America's heartland. It's bred into its people. There's an undying faith that tomorrow will be better, there ain't no giving up, and always look for the good. The glass is half full, so let's keep pouring. Faith, family, and courage got those folks through the toughest of times. Like a sandblaster, the Dust Bowl removed a lot of things from this old country and her people, but it didn't get their will to survive. With a gritty force, it carved out a tougher, more determined bunch of folks. I'm glad I didn't have to go through it, but I am so proud and indebted to those who did. I hope to continue their legacy. So when it hasn't rained in months and the wind kicks up the dust without ceasing, I remember how it must have been for my father and all the fathers who endured the hard times of the 30s. And I'll be thankful for a little bit of grit in my teeth and hope in my heart. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that. And I hope it give you a little bit of peace of mind just to hear it. I can remember the stories that my dad and his sister told over and over. And there's so many more of them out there. And folks, what we're going through now, sure, it's not that great depression of dust. We can't see that virus that's out there. But folks, we can remain strong. We can get over this, and with a little grit and determination and hope in our hearts, we'll make it just fine. So folks, this next story, and some of y'all remember him, who he touched our heart and so many of y'all's too. Who is it? Frank the Wonder Dog. Man, he was a blessing, and, uh, and that dog was just something special. He taught me so much about life, and uh, let me just share that story with you. It's called Catch a Rabbit. Blessings come in all forms and packages, big and small. About three years ago, we got one of those blessings. He showed up in the yard one day, bearing gifts. First, there was an old chewed up boot, then a stuffed teddy bear with one arm, and after that, several gloves, none of them of which matched, of course. He was a speckled bird dog, and he was a character. He was the happiest dog that I have ever been around in my life, and I've been around a lot of happy dogs. We saw him often. He'd come and go for a long time. He wouldn't get in our pickup, but he would follow us all over town. He knew the fastest route to the grocery store, post office, and high school sporting events. Folks would ask, is that y'all's dog waiting at the door? I'd just smile and say, he sure thinks so. One day, he figured out our dog door. And when we arrived home from running errands, there was our blessing. Stretched out and fast asleep on the couch like he owned the whole place. From that point on, we claimed him full time. We called him Frank the Wonder Dog because we always wondered what he was getting into and what he was thinking. He still showered us with gifts and I suppose to show his gratitude, after we'd been away on a cooking tour and arrived at home, the yard would be sprinkled with Tupperware and mismatched shoes. It would always be the right shoe because for some reason he never picked up a left one. The best gift we ever got from him was a turtle. We're still not really sure how he got the whole thing in his mouth and where it come from. The gifts weren't anything special, but they were special to Frank because I think he methodically chose each one to bring to us. This dog showed us about life. Every day was a holiday to him and he made the most of each one. He was always the first one to greet me every morning. He made me smile and he'd stretch and let out a little grumble as if to say, it's about time you got up, Dad. We're missing out on a great day to catch some. We witnessed Frank's never give up attitude every day. You see, there was a cottontail rabbit that lived under the deck in the backyard. Frank and this rabbit played many hours at catch me if you can. Frank would stand on that deck and he'd bark for hours as if he thought it might lure the little feller out. He would creep through the yard with each step so soft as to not make a sound on the grass. Every time I'd tell him, Frank, you ain't gonna catch that rabbit, but it didn't matter to Frank. 
He loved the hunt and he loved the adventure. Frank became quite a star on YouTube on our channel. His carefree attitude was contagious. He had the knack of coming on camera just long enough to hike his leg and wet something down. He made folks laugh and he'd stick his head out of the window of the pickup to feel the wind against his face. He made us thankful for another great adventure each day. Tragically, we lost Frank one morning. He wasn't just a dog, he was family. I dug a hole right by the deck where he had laid for so many hours waiting on that rabbit. And I filled that hole with tears and the happiest dog I've ever known. The next morning, long before sunrise, I poured myself a cup of coffee and I sat by Frank's grave, wondering how would I make it without my friend? As the sun began to peek through the darkness, I noticed something moving in the grass on the other side of the yard. And it was Frank's buddy, the rabbit. He didn't move. Neither did I. It was like he was standing at attention, paying tribute to a fallen comrade. I sat there silent for what seemed like hours, hoping to hear Frank bark and sound the alarm. And then I heard it, plain as day, catch a rabbit. Folks, at that time tears rained down my face, I mean, I realized I can't give up or be afraid to take a chance or stop doing what's in my heart because someone doesn't think I can. Many sunsets have come and gone since that day. Still, every time I open that back gate, I think old Frank sneaking around the corner just knowing he was gonna catch that rabbit. It still brings a tear now and then, but the memories of our comical dog and his never give up spirit have eased the pain. There will be days in life when you feel like you're coming up short or that you just can't do it anymore. But when those feelings creep in, just remember Frank the Wonder Dog, who always had hope and was always thankful for the little blessings in life. Catch a rabbit. Well, folks, uh, it still gets to me every time I hear it. But that's that never give up spirit. There's going to be smiles. There's going to be tears, but folks, we going to get through because you know what? We're going to be like Frank the Wonder Dog. We're going to catch a rabbit every day. Don't give up. Hope you enjoyed this. I do. It come from the heart. I need you to leave us a comment or share it on social media. What you thought about this? We need to know because, hey, we'd sort of like to do more of these. Sort of lifts me up when I get to do them for me. As always, I thank our servicemen and women and all our veterans for keeping that flag flying over there. But folks, we have so much to be thankful for in this great nation at this time. The doctors, the EMTs, the paramedics, people at the front line fighting it. It's not like that dust storm we talked about. We can't see it coming, but they're fighting it and we're gonna win because that's what we do. So remember all those that are making these blessings happen for us and lift them up daily. So remember folks, them videos still going to come out at 2.30 Central Time every Wednesday, and we're going to throw a bonus in on Saturday. Be a check in that community page, followers down the trail, we thank you. We never take it for granted you watch. God bless you, each and every one, and catch a rabbit. This is a hard sentence. It's a long story, oh my gosh. It's supposed to be Southwest. <laughs>